Hey everyone, today I'm doing a video on Wiegand readers and the Flipper Zero. Wiegand is a common protocol used for RFID, NFC, and keypad readers. This video will look at the Flipper Zero debug application called Accessor, which is able to read Wiegand signals, but we'll also look at a new Wiegand application I released on GitHub for troubleshooting Wiegand systems. My application allows you to record signals from various Wigan readers and then replay them to test various controllers. All right, let's get started. I'm going to launch the Accessor app in the debug folder of my Flipper Zero. The green D0 wire goes to pin A4 on the Flipper. The white D1 wire goes to pin A7 on the Flipper and the black ground goes to ground. I'm using quick splice terminals from Amazon, so you don't need to cut into the wires and interrupt the flow. The way it works is you just take the wire, put it over and close it, and that'll clamp it on. And then once it's clamped, you're able to connect this other end to it and then crimp a wire onto there. I'll put my Amazon affiliate link in the comments for anyone that's interested. Now that everything's wired up and the app is running, let's go ahead and scan a badge. At the end of the output, you can see the W26 for 26 bit, and you can see the code is B4E9BE. Scanning this key fob, we can see it's a different code, 26 bit, B8E2C9. The keypad uses four bit weekend, and it's basically the number is the number, but then escape is 1B in the app instead of the actual code of 10, which is 0A. I have another video on the Wiegand protocol if you're interested in learning more details. Now we're going to look at the application I wrote for troubleshooting. Since it injects signals onto the lines, the wiring is slightly more complex. We've tapped the green wire twice and we've installed a 12K resistor across the green wires. So right now we have also on the white wires, we have a 12K resistor. Um, this could be a 10K, it's fine, this is what I had laying around. And right now there's a wire connecting between the greens and so we're not actually using that resistor. So I have my ohm meter set to measure ohms and we're going to look at the resistance across the resistor which should be zero ohms because it should be getting shorted out by that green wire. So let's make sure it's at zero. Okay that one looks like it's at zero ohms. That's really good. Again that's zero ohms because of this green wire. Now let's confirm the white wires also has zero ohms, and it does, very good. And even though we've tapped that wire and added resistors, we can see that the keypad still works and the flipper's picking it up through that second tap that we made. Just like in an action movie, you're gonna go ahead and cut that green wire in between the two, which is gonna enable the resistor to still flow. No alarms went off and we're still able to send key presses. This is the part they forget to show you in the action movies, which is you also have to cut the white wire. With both wires cut, we're gonna make sure the keypad's still working. Yep, looks like it is. And now the electricity is flowing through our resistors for the white and green data. I'm going to keep my first flipper connected to the white, green, and black wires on the right side. And now we're gonna hook up the second flipper to the cables on the left side. So make sure when you're connecting it that you're hooking it to the right side away from this reader and not on the side towards the reader. So make sure you've done it on the way from the reader. I've marked the ones that are away with little black lines on them as well so it's easier to see. The ground is still gonna be ground. We only needed one ground. And then there's our white wire so we'll clip that onto the white. So on my second flipper, I've hooked up the white, green, and black wires, the same as the first flipper, but it's on the right side of those resistors. So let's go ahead and play that signal. And you can see the other flipper and the door picked up the 26-bit card read signal. For this next demo, I'm gonna disconnect the flipper and plug into the second flipper so you can see my application. All right, so let's take a look at the application. We have instructions, read, and load. Under instructions, it tells you which pins to connect to your Flipper Zero. And it also talks about how to connect the resistor between the D0 and D1 wires. Let's go back and take a look at the read option. So again, it reminds you which wires go to which pins on the Flipper. Let's go ahead and read a card. 
we can see it's 26 bits and then it also shows us those bit values. As we scroll down, we can see the pulse duration in the period between pulses. And then for 26 bit, it also shows you the parity and if it was okay or error, the facility code, which was B4 in this case, the ID of the badge, which was E9BE, and the odd parity, if it was okay or error. And then for advanced use cases, you can see the timings of each one of the pulses and if it was a one or a zero that was transmitted. Clicking the left button on the flipper lets us save the file. I'm going to save this file as badge. We can press the back button to read another signal like this key fob. And again, we'll press the back button and this time we'll use the keypad to enter a value. So this time I've pressed seven, which is zero one one one. This time I'll press the enter button instead. Now let's load our previously saved weekend file and pick our badge file. And you can see all of the original information that was there from before is now loaded in, including the facility code, the ID, the parity information, and even the timing of each of the pulses. We can now click on the play button to replay that command. And you can also, if you want, edit the files to change the timings or the data that you're sending. I hope you found this video helpful. And remember, only cut holes in walls you own. I'll post a link to the project in the comments. Please like and subscribe.